Deborah, tell me a little bit about your business and how you came to own a coffee and yarn shop. Well, we've been locally owned and operated since 2000. Um, we basically wanted to give a place, a community place, where people could come and be with friends and, you know, have good locally crafted food and drinks and, you know, enjoy local yarn and high quality wools. Okay. And what prompted you to take over the business? I know you worked here for a while, right? Yeah, I've worked here since 2000, actually. I started with the original owners. And when they were ready to sell, we basically didn't want to see such a valuable place in the community, you know, close. So we thought it would be a really good idea to, you know, take over and, you know, make a few changes, but keep the original vision of the original owners going. And how long have you owned the business at this since point? Since 2007. 2007. What makes yarn and coffee a good mix? You know, both are an awesome form of relaxation and, you know, we love that people can come and sit for hours and have lunch and coffee and we have so many people that have made great friends here and they just sit in it all day and, you know, it's just a great combination. So. Okay. And you do more than just sell yarn here, don't you? Do you, you have groups that come to meet? Tell us a little bit about that. We have lots of groups that come, you know, we have anything from Girl Scouts and church groups, we have charity knitting that meets, we have men's groups. Um, that all just come and meet here different days of the week. Uh, we carry a variety of classes anywhere from your beginning to children's all the way to your advance. Um, so lots of different groups come together and we're also open late on the first and third Friday of the month. We're open until 11 o'clock at night and we get a lot of people that just come and hang out and get a big rompus group until 11 o'clock at night. So. And I remember because my mom was really into these kind of crafts when I was a kid. Yes. Uh, People do knitting, crocheting, what other kinds of things do they do? Or are those the big two? Those are the big two here, um, but we have a lot of groups that come in. We actually have one group in particular that come in and they do beading, make jewelry. People bring any craft that they're into and share it with people here. So. Okay. And then there's the coffee end of it too. Yes. Um, do you have quite a variety of coffee here? We do. We carry on Cora coffee. Uh, we do a lot of specialty drinks. We have great brewed coffee. We carry different, four different kinds every day. Uh, we do food as well, so we carry a lot of local cheeses. We're actually about to plant our own garden out front. So we're going to carry all of our own produce. And uh, we get a lot of great bakery from Madison Sourdough. They deliver fresh every day. And we also carry 4 and 20 Cafe, which is a new cafe in Madison. And they bring us tasty pies. It's all local produce. and. You know, it's really a nice variety of food and treats available in the cafe, and we have an expertly trained st uh, staff that does great work. Okay. If there was one thing about your business, Deborah, that people in Verona should know, what would it be? I would say just to know that you don't have to be a knitter to come here. It's a great place you can hang out with friends, people bring board games, meet with friends and do puzzles in the paper. It's just a great community place. We have free internet, so people can come and sit as long as they want, do homework, meet friends. It's just a great place to come and you know have camaraderie with locals, and it's a, it's a great environment. And I've been here all times of the day, and I know that you get everything from uh, teenagers up through folks well into their 70s and 80s. Yes, definitely. And they all seem to be enjoying themselves and, and sharing uh, their project of the moment. Yeah, everybody loves to share. We actually have a little bell on our porch, so everywhere from the little kids to the older ladies will just run, go out there and ring the bell every time they finish a project, and the whole dining room will clap for them. And, you know, it's a great way to you know feel encouraged about finding your craft or just making friends. Now, while we're on the topic of your clientele here, mm -hmm. do you have any kind of unusual or special stories that come to mind regarding your customers, uh, special projects people have worked on? Uh, Special, you know, people coming from great distances, I know, to buy certain kinds of yarn. Yeah, people come, we get customers that come from all over the country. They hear about us and they come here for the fact that we have local yarns. You know, and a lot of our customers, they see this as a home away from home and they're very invested in what we do here. I know I personally, when I got married, all of our regular customers got together and knit me this humongous afghan. Mm -hmm. And each of them did a special square for me, you know, based on what I was interested in. or. Last week, a whole group of customers just went outside and did our garden. They just started weeding, and just they love to help out and they love to be here. And you know, it's just wonderful, and it's great to see new customers come in and see, you know, want to share in this. It's just a great community. Now, do you knit yourself? I do. I knit quite a bit. So, <laughs> and are you a coffee drinker? A little too much, so, but yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a so, uh, you know, I used to. I worked my way through college. Uh, flipping hamburgers and, and 
was a lunch cook. Mm -hmm. and it, it took me years to uh, eat a cheeseburger again because I, for, after four <laughs> years of doing it, I couldn't do it. But that's not the story with eating and coffee, apparently. It's not. Um, you know, my my stash of yarn at home could rival the store sometimes, and you know, the coffee is just so good. And Ancora does such a wonderful job, and it's always new and exciting. The food is always new and exciting, and you know, you never get sick of it. One last question. I know we're standing in front of uh, just a rainbow of colors here. Yes. Uh, how do you keep in, you know, in touch with what's what's new and trendy, and and or or is it just kind of standard colors that have been the same throughout the years? How, how do you kind of stay on top of the market when you're? It's hard, and it's a huge industry. And we go to trade shows. Um, I just went to a trade show in Phoenix. There's also one in Columbus, Ohio. That's the big one. Um, but we actually have a yarn manager, Heather Black, who is always on top of the trends, does tons of online research. She meets with reps every couple months to find out what's new and exciting. And because the colors change every single year almost with what's popular. You know, I know last year purples were huge, and so there's so many shades of purple. And, you know, new and exciting things are coming up all the time. And, you know, Heather's an expert at keeping on top of that. So. Oh, okay. So it's not, you can't just go and, and by the standard set of colors, you have to stay on top of this stuff. Yeah, you kind of see what's the demand and what's popular. You know, people are, you know, especially with baby yarns, people are getting away from the pastels and they want more jewel tones. So it's sort of knowing when those trends are coming and when to change it. So. Well, um, that'll wrap up our interview. Can you tell us where you're located here in Verona? Um, we're right on South Main Street. Address is 125 South Main. You can also contact us through our website. It's knitandsip.com. Or you can just give us a call. We're here um, from 6.30 in the morning till 8.30 p.m. Um, Monday through Friday, 7 to 5 on the weekends. And you can give us a call at 608-848-2755. Okay. And one again, reemphasize that you don't have to be an expert knitter to come down here. No, we take all, all skill levels. You don't even have to buy your yarn here. We're here to help you. We're here to make your craft dreams come true or to, you know, make you the best latte you've ever had. So. Well, Deborah, thank you for being part of our show. Wonderful. It was we'll nice be, to meet I'll you. I'll be back for a hot chocolate sometime soon. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And welcome back to Chatting with the Chamber. This is our third segment of our third episode. And I'm at Tuvalu Coffee House. And I'm visiting with Janelle Kubli and Bobby Klein. Um, Tuvalu is under new ownership and as of about uh, two months ago. Yep. And uh, so, Janelle, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about the business and how you came to take ownership of the business here. Well, I had worked here, I had worked at Tuvalu for about a year and a half and the opportunity arose to uh, buy the coffee shop and I decided it's probably what I want to do with the rest of my life is run a coffee shop. So we bought the coffee shop and... All right. Tuvalu does more than coffee too. They do gifts.